Hello, my name is George W. Jones, Director of Fine Arts for the Garland Independent School District, and welcome to another edition of Spotlight on the Arts. We are very proud to have student artwork hanging all across our school district. Not only can you find this artwork on our various campuses, but the Harris Hill Administration Building is another venue we use to display student artwork. But sometimes you can find student artwork in unusual places. When Rowlett High School Principal Michelle Bounds wanted to spruce up her parking space at the school, she asked her art teachers to recommend a student who might be up for the task. They recommended an outstanding young art student, Megan Strands. The staff of GRS-TV recently visited the Rowlett campus to find out more about Megan and this project. Well, um, at Rowlett High School, our seniors paint their parking spaces, and that's one of the privileges of being a senior, is you get to pay a little bit of a fee, then you get to paint your parking space. Um, when I noticed what a great job they were doing on their own, I just mentioned in passing, I would sure like to have a nice parking space painted too. And she kind of was asking around for recommendations, and one of the assistant principals, Mr. Creel, um, recommended me. And so I was very honored to do that because, I mean, it's for the principal. And so I was a little nervous at first, but then I really tried to focus on it because I really wanted to make her proud. So she submitted some designs to me and they were fabulous. And I said, wonderful, go for it. And um, not realizing the amount of detail and time she was spending on this. I wanted to capture the spirit of Rowlett High School with the R and also the eagle, but I wanted to add some personal touches for Miss Bounds, so I added a crown and jewels and sparkles, so she liked that. When I came out the first day, it was about 108 degrees, and Megan had taped um, her template on my parking space and was out here and had begun the process. Her mother had um, gotten her a little tart to cover her. It was a whole nother process that she wasn't necessarily used to because she was out there working in the elements of the weather, having to do this, and instead of you know working in a con controlled temperature environment. So she realized, you know, too, um, I, I believe going into the professional world, you know, when you commit to do something and you really ha have to finish it, uh, that strong work ethic is gonna transcend um, into her career and it's gonna help her. She has uh, a lot of uh, work ethic, and that's another avenue that we try to push on these kids is that they, uh, that they do have to have a little bit of work ethic to, uh, to be able to produce the, the kind of artwork that these kids are capable of doing. Push, 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 that's what we do. That process in total took me 84 hours to do, and it was on the last week of summer, and it was over 100 degrees, and it was kind of miserable, but it was worth it. I was totally blown away at, at what a great job she did, and I'm so proud of this. At first, I was a little nervous. I didn't want to park on it. I wanted to just leave it, and then I finally told her, I said, you know, every morning when I pull in the spot, I think about you and all your time and effort. Uh, she's a tremendous artist, and I'd seen her work before, so I knew she was going to do it right. Well, I've always been creative and loved to do arts and crafts, even when I was little. Um, I remember having a birthday party in preschool where we did arts and crafts with all my friends. Um, and then in middle school, I really took an interest in it when we did um, junior vase. And I've known Megan uh, since her freshman year. She came to Rowlett. She took my class the second semester of her freshman year. and It was actually a sculpture and ceramics class. I could tell that she really had something because you know, she put a lot of detail and effort into her work and she would come in for tutorials and she was anxious to learn more things. And so it's been, it's ha been a real joy having her in class. I convinced Megan to take my painting class and um, she's gone to state base with us twice and just an incredible student. Well, um, base is a statewide competition where over 25,000 art pieces are entered and only 140 get the Gold Seal Award, and I was fortunate enough to win it two years in a row, 
and um, my first year I did um, a piece called I Love My iPhone and I love doing um, designs and patterns but my art teachers Mr. and Mrs. Wilkinson really wanted me to um, try to do a self-portrait so I kind of combined those two and did a combo design self-portrait for my first year and that I used um, watercolor pencils and then I did um, some Sharpie design patterns and layered that so it would have a 3D effect. It's a lot of tweaking to get to the point to where these kids can have a piece that's going to that's going to do well at vase. We have a lot of input from herself, we have a lot of input from me, we have a lot of input from other art teachers as well too to kind of get them up to the level that they need to be. That's really the biggest part is a, a, ch a child that's willing to you know try to better themselves and to get better in art. It, it takes a lot of effort you know it yes it is natural skill to you know to have that natural creative and artistic ability but it's also a lot of hard work to get better and so you know Megan has continued to um, just put in the time on her art pieces and it's been a real joy having her in class. The toughest part is being creative. The toughest part is being continually creative and constantly having that, that ability to do something that's unique, something that's um, original, and something that's their own. And that's the hardest part for, for upper level kids to, de to develop. And that's where that higher level thinking comes in, is um, using the knowledge that they know about art, the knowledge that they possess, the knowledge that they gain throughout the class, and then integrating that into their design and their art and their expressiveness. It uh, is so important to show the community, to show the school, and to make a difference in these kids' lives as to how important art is in every aspect of their life, you know, because kids will come in and they don't have much of a pre an appreciation for art, and then they start realizing, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was, and the amount of effort that it takes to create something. I think the difference about Rowlett is this, is, um, uh, is the expectation of our staff and the expectation of the kids involved. Our art teachers know that the kids aspire to do great things. We have a lot of students who make it to the vase competition, which is in art, um, but the expectation level is the staff there, and so the expectation of the students is there as well, and they strive to be the best anywhere, and they are. Um, well, I'm really excited to go to college to study um, advertising and graphic design. So that's kind of what I want to focus on in my future career. These kids, a lot of them are, are destined to do great things, you know, to go on and be graphic designers and advertisers like what Megan wants to do, or to um, also become architects. I have some students that are now architects and then I have um, some students that are art teachers and graphic designers as well. So it's really exciting to see all the, the things that they accomplish and to know that maybe you were just a very small part of that, you know, in influencing them. And Megan is one of those people that has the ability and drive and um, I'm excited to see what she's going to be able to produce this year. Hopefully she'll be able to get a gold seal this year as well too. That's what we're aiming for. So again, push, push, push. That's what we do. I feel more like a coach sometimes than an art teacher because that's what we do is we push these kids to their maximum ability level without them even knowing sometimes. <laughs> we are very fortunate in the Garland ISD to have an outstanding art faculty. Many of these outstanding teachers are also producing artists. Each year, several members of our art faculty display some of their work in an art show, which is held in the lobby of the Granville Art Center. Some of this artwork is for sale, and part of the proceeds go to provide scholarships to graduating high school seniors. These scholarships are given in memory of two of our art teachers who dedicated many years of service to the students of GISD, Terry Smith and Kay Schwartz. Let's take a look at some of the artwork from the Faculty Art Show.
The GISD Faculty Art Show runs through January 21st in the lobby of the Granville Art Center in downtown Garland. We hope that you can stop by and see some of this amazing artwork by the GISD Art Faculty. Thank you for watching today. As always, I invite you to visit our website at www.garlandisd.net forward slash fine arts. There you'll find a list of performances and events that are taking place across our school district. I hope that you'll join us again next time when once again we shine our spotlight on the arts.